Hey everyone. So this lesson is on um, solving equations. So this is the start of unit two um, in our class. Uh, our goal here is to be able to solve an equation uh, with only one variable in it. If we'll look, um, as we move ahead, we'll look at how to solve um, equations that have multiple variables in them or that have like, you know, squares and things like that in them. Um, right now we're just uh, focusing on um, one variable uh, and, and trying to solve that. Um, so our essential question, how does the order of operations relate to solving equations? We've talked about the order of operations. So we do all the, the grouping uh, activities or the parentheses um, parts of an equation first uh, when we solve that or an expression. Um, and, then, uh, and then we do um, any exponents that are in there. Uh, then we look at multiplication and division and again, it doesn't have to be in that order. It can be multiplication or division, whichever one comes first, kind of reading left to right. And then the last thing we do is um, addition and subtraction. And so we wanna talk about how does that order of operations relate to our process of solving equations? So in general, these are the steps you're gonna go through when we solve an equation, okay? Um, there's kind of four general steps. That doesn't mean that you can solve every equation in four steps. It just means that there are four sort of parts to this process. And so some of those parts might take multiple steps to go through, um, but these are generally the four things you wanna do. So the first thing you wanna do is to try to clean up both sides of the equation. And I'll kind of explain what that means. So um, it means that if we can simplify the left side of the equation, or we can simplify the right side of the equation, we wanna do that first. That might mean combining like terms, it might mean um, getting rid of fractions, it, um, it might be doing some distribution or multiplication. Um, it kind of just depends on the, on the equation that you're working on. Um, but remember we have two sides to that equation, there's expression on the left and expression on the right. We want those expressions to be as simple as possible before we um, move on to start cleaning them up. Okay. Second step, we want to get the variable. So there's a variable term and there'll be a constant term. The variable term is the one that has the letter with it. Um, and the constant term is the one without the letter with it. We want to get those on opposite sides of the equal sign. Um, ideally, uh, it's kind of convenient if you can get the variable on the left-hand side of the equation and the constant on the right hand side of the equation, but it really does not matter, right? You can get it on either side um, and it's just whatever is most convenient, but you do want to get them separated. The third part is to get all the constant terms. So this is kind of what I was saying. You get the variable terms on, on one side, you get the constant terms on the other side. So we kind of move things around. To move things from one side of the equation to the other side of the equation, we're gonna do this process of adding the opposite. Okay, so we're gonna add the opposite. If I have a positive uh, four on the left-hand side of the equation and I wanna want to get rid of that, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add negative four or subtract four from the left side of the equation and I'm gonna do the same to the right-hand side of the equation. And so um, we'll talk about that. And then the last step, and this step, sometimes you don't need to do it uh, simply just due to the nature of the equation. But um, if there's a, a number, if there's a coefficient, right? If there's a number in front of the variable, we want to divide uh, to get rid of that, okay? So sometimes that will mean dividing by a fraction. Sometimes it will mean dividing by an integer. Sometimes it will, um, it will not involve anything. The variable will just be by itself um, automatically, so. These are the general steps. Let's look, at, let's look at some examples. So here's the first one. I've got the general steps kind of written down here so we can kind of remind ourselves, but we want to solve this equation. So um, the first step, I'm going to check to see if I can simplify either side of this equation, I have x plus seven, and then I have nine. So x plus seven, um, that's just x plus seven. I can't combine these, right? This is a variable term. This is a constant term. They are not like terms. I cannot combine them. And the nine is just simply a nine. There's nothing I can do to make that simpler. So first step is already done. Second step, get all the variable terms on one side of the equation. So here I have X plus seven. I've got a variable term here, the X, but I've also got this plus seven, this constant term. So I want to get rid of this constant term. 
So this is x plus 7. So I want to undo that plus 7. I want to undo plus 7. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to subtract 7 or add negative 7. So I'm going to add negative 7 to both sides. And then if I just simply combine these, right, if I just add straight down, um, x just comes right down. 7 minus 7 is 0. So I don't have to write that. And I get um, 9 minus 7 is 2. And then if I look here, it looks like I've got it done. I know what x is equal to. x has got to be equal to 2. So um, I've already got the constant terms on the, on the other side of the equation. Um, I don't need to divide the variable. It's just there's just one x, and that's all I care about. Um, so I know that x is equal to 2. Now, the last thing I want to do, and this sometimes seems kind of trivial, but I just want to verify that I did it right. And the way that I do that, I'm just going to take 2. I'm going to put it back up in here and see that I did it right. So if I say 2 plus 7 is 9, right, that shows me, right, I know that 2 plus 7 is 9, so that's a check. Right? A lot of times you'll do this step in your head. You can just kind of look at it and think through. Um, but going back and checking that answer is an important part. Now, this is a pretty simple example, right, a very simple example. A lot of people can just look at this equation right here and say, well, something plus seven equals nine. Well, that's got to be two. X has got to be two. And you can figure that out. And that's great. That's a good skill to have. What we're practicing here, though, is that process of solving the equations, of getting those variables all by themselves. So that when we get to more complicated um, equations, that we have a process that we can rely on and, and work through. Let's look at another example here. So this one um, is a little, little more involved. I uh, notice that we have a two in front of the X. Okay. So um, again, you, you might be able to kind of work this in your head. You might be able to say, okay, some number times two minus five is 11. And I can kind of work backwards and think through that in my head, but I want to follow this process and kind of uh, explore this process and see what happens. So I'm going to check both sides of the equation. So the expression on the left-hand side, 2x minus 5, I've got two unlike terms. So we have a variable term and a constant term, so two unlike terms. I can't combine those. And then on the left side, I'm sorry, on the right side, right, this uh, expression on the right-hand side, 11, that's just 11. It can't be simplified. So the first part is done. I want to get the variable term all by itself. So here I've got 2x is my variable term. I want to get that by itself. And I've got minus 5. So what I want to do is undo that subtraction. I want to undo that subtraction. So the way that I undo subtraction is I add the opposite. This is a negative 5. This negative goes with the 5. Right? This is negative 5. So I've got a negative 5 here. So I want to add a positive 5 to that. And then I'll just combine these. I'll just add them straight down. So 2x comes straight down. And then negative 5 plus 5 gives me 0, so I don't need to write that. And 11 plus 5 gives me 16. OK, so I've got my variable term all by itself. Um, I want to get the constant term all by itself. And I've got that already. So the act of moving that 5, of adding 5 to both sides, gave me that constant term on the right-hand side, on the other side. Um, so this third step is already done. Number 4, divide by the variable. Um, divide to get the variable by itself. Here I have 2 times x. I have two x's. So two x's, right? x times 2 gives me 16. I don't care what 2 times x is. I want to know what x is. So I'm going to undo this, um, this multiplication here. I'm going to undo this multiplication. So I'm going to divide by 2. Undo multiplication with division. Divide both sides by 2. I have to, to do it to both sides to keep that equal, right? If I divide one side by two, but not the other one, they're no longer equal to each other. Um, so two divided by two is one, and one x is just x. And then 16 divided by two is eight. Whoops, I said eight and I wrote six uh, equal to eight. Okay, so I wanna check my answer. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna say, well, two times eight minus five, equals 11. And I could probably say, well, 2 times 8 is 16, and 16 minus 5 is 11. Uh, so there's my check. I, I know that, that I did that correctly. So there's my answer, x is equal to 8. All right, let's look at one last example. So here I've got some fractions, all right? Now, 
um, there's a couple of ways that you can deal with fractions. Not, not everybody likes fractions. It's, it's confusing and there's you know, more rules to think of and that sort of stuff. But um, just treat the fractions just like numbers. They're numbers just like any other numbers. And we just want to um, treat them just like we would any other number. So I'm going to work my process again. My process says to clean up both sides of the equation. Here I've got one uh, side of the equation, this expression, um, one third times y plus two thirds. Well, again, this is one term here, one third y. We could also say that's y divided by three, right? Multiplying by a fraction is the same as dividing. Uh, so we say, well, one y times three um, plus two over three. Well, this is one term and this is one term and they're not like terms. This is a variable term. This is a constant term, so I can't combine those. So, um, and the seven ninths, again, just a number. Uh, I'm going to treat that just like a number. It's I can't do anything with it. I can't uh, make it more simpler. Um, now, it's something like this. If this was, for example, like six over nine, I could simplify that fraction. Okay, but it's not. Seven doesn't go into nine. They have no common multiples. So, um, so uh, we'll just go ahead with our process. I want to get the variable term all by itself. So here I have one third y. Um, and I'm going to write this, I'm going to multiply this out. One times y is just y. And I'm going to multiply just the one times the y. That gives me y over three. So that's just a, a little more compact way of writing that. Um, and then um, plus two thirds equals seven over nine. Okay, so now I want to get rid of this two thirds. So this is y over three plus two thirds. I want to undo that step. So I'm going to subtract two thirds from both sides. Now, right off the top of my head, like I don't know what 7 thirds minus 2 thirds is. Um, so I'm going to have to work on that a little bit. So, uh, but let's just get to the next step. We get this variable term all by itself. We add these together, combine these. I get y divided by 3, or 1 third times y. Uh, the 2 thirds cancel out. That makes 0. And on this side, we have 7 ninths uh, minus 2 thirds. Okay, so to combine these fractions, I have to have a common denominator. Okay, so I have to find a denominator that both three and nine go into. Well, nine goes into three, I'm sorry, three goes into nine. So I can use nine. I can turn this fraction over here into ninths. And so if this was ninths, I'd have to multiply the bottom by three. And then to keep it equal, I'd have to keep uh, multiply the top by three. So now I have y over three is equal to seven ninths minus two times three is six and three times three is nine. So now I can combine these fractions. So I've got seven ninths minus six ninths. I just take, I have seven ninths and I take away six ninths. I'm left with one ninth. Okay. So I'm counting up how many ninth size pieces I have. And so that gives me one ninth. This little uh, watermark down here really bothers me. I wish I could get rid of it, but uh, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Um, okay, so here we have uh, our simplified expression, our simplified equation. I've got the variable term all by itself on the left-hand side. I've got the um, constant term on the right-hand side. Um, all I need to do now is get y by itself. This is one third of y. I don't really want to know what a third of y is. I want to know what y is. This is y divided by three. I want to undo that division. So I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So I'm going to multiply this side by three. I'm going to multiply this side by three. Now, when I'm multiplying fractions, right, I can think of this as three over one, and I can just multiply straight across. Y times three is three Y, and then three Y divided by three. The three and the three will cancel each other out, and I'm just left with Y. Now, on this side, I have three times one is three, and nine times one is nine, and so I get three over nines. Now, that is an answer, okay? But to be considered a correct answer, right? To be, uh, to be considered the appropriate answer, um, we wanna try to simplify this if we can. So we wanna reduce this if we can. I know that three um, and nine, like three goes into nine, and so I can simplify this. So if I divide the top and bottom by three, if I divide this by three, and I divide this by three, I get one and three. So I get y is one third. 
And so there's my answer, y is one third. Now, I wanna go back and check this. Okay, so if y is one third, that equals one third. I'm gonna plug this in up here and I wanna check it. So I'm gonna say one third times y, and y is also one third, plus two thirds equals seven over nine, seven ninths. I multiply this straight across, one times one is one, three times three is nine, so that's one ninth plus two thirds is equal to seven ninths. I, I've done this process before, right? Right down here, we said, well, two thirds, the equivalent of that is um, six over nine. If I multiply the, the bottom by three and the top by three, I get six over nine. So this is one ninth plus six ninths equals seven ninths. And that is a true statement. Okay, so there's my check step. So I know that my answer of y equals one third is correct. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. Please do the, um, the first assignment, assignment 2-1 um, on Canvas. All right.